Ranger. I beg your pardon? Are you sure this is the bus for Old Faithful? Yes, ma'am. You see, I've never been in Yellowstone Park before. I've been in Yosemite, Zion, Bryce, and Glacier. I'm going to be here two whole weeks. Really? I'm studying the flora and the fauna. We ain't got no geysers by those names. Flowers and animals. Well, she didn't say flowers and animals. Perhaps you could help me find the right location. Maps, illustrations, and directions, page 26. Perhaps you could take care of me. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I got a mule to take care of. Name and address, please. Ruth Foster, Chicago. How long do you intend staying? Just a few days. Oh, that's too bad. Where will you be staying? At Old Faithful Inn. Rule 16, page 1. Rangers are to assist visitors in every manner possible. How nice. Well, I'm a stickler for rules. Just call the ranger station any time. Ask for Dick Sherwood. Thank you. Not at all. It's a pleasure. There's one reason why I want to be a ranger. Pretty nice, isn't she? Oh, gee, it's girls like her that just makes a fella feel woozy all over. You know, like you feel when you just come out of chloroform? I ought to know someone like her. You know, what I need is a badge. Never mind, Payday. I'm being transferred to Old Faithful. Stick around and I'll treat you to an introduction. Oh, brother, I'll be right on your tail. You know, Gertrude, someday I'll get my badge and then they'll be mighty proud of us. Sorry, Miss Foster, but you're breaking one of our most stringent rules. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Really, I didn't. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Am I under arrest? Well, that depends upon your future conduct. Allow me. Flowers are very becoming to you. But I thought you said it was against the law. We believe in giving promising young botanists every opportunity. But I'm not a botanist. <laughs> our service is unlimited. You are now a graduate botanist with full honors. Not a very difficult course, is it? Maybe there's something else I can do for you. You might give me a fishing diploma. Oh, now that is a more difficult course. It demands company. I'm sure father would be delighted. Your father? Where have you been hiding him? When you checked in yesterday, you were alone. That's right. Father gets in on Friday. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I mean, uh, you give me his description and I'll fix him up. That's not as easy as it seems. Why, it's a cinch. Now, let me see. I should say he was a tall, handsome, distinguished-looking gentleman with the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. That's the way I picture him. Picture him? <laughs> I know it sounds strange, but I haven't seen my father in 18 years. Oh. Dad's been sort of a galloping gander, here, there, and the other place. For the past few years, he's been in Australia on some sort of a mining proposition. I see. And Mother? Mother died five years ago. I'm sorry. By the way, Miss Foster, I have a couple of free hours in the morning. How would you like to ride over and see Yellowstone Falls? Well, I... I'd love to. If you promise to get me back in town to meet Father. And it's a date? It's a date. Meeting one's father for the first time, especially at my age, is rather terrifying. I don't know what to do or say. Well, you'll have an even break. You'll both be up against the same thing. Yes, that's why I must meet him alone. We'll have to get acquainted before he comes home to Chicago. Great invention is getting acquainted. Suppose we try it out afternoon. 
A lot of afternoon. In fact, every afternoon. To what do you attribute your breathtaking speed, Mr. Sherwood? To the age we live in, Miss Foster. Speed, speed, speed. Hmm. Aren't you forgetting it's my father I'm supposed to get acquainted with? Well, in that case, let's make it a threesome and we'll all get acquainted together. But I thought it was your job to acquaint people with the park. Hello, Weezer. Oh. <laughs> Matter having a little trouble? You haven't got a step ladder handy, have you? No, but I'm a darn good booster. Oh, right you are. I'm really at my best after sundown. Really? Because then we have the campfire. Quite a sight. You should let me take you. I'd love to see you, but that really depends on Father. He arrives at three. the Yellowstone. How are you? Fit as they come. It's good to see you still on the job. You have a pleasant winter? Yes, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, as a matter of information, is the park already loaded with naturalists or have I a clear field? It's all yours, Mr. Ross. As usual, you are the first to arrive. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I'll see you around. <laughs> Young man, follow me. I'll show you the way. Yes, sir. Sir, have you a reservation? No, I haven't. A cabin, please. Something quiet, away from the inn. Yes, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Foster. You were, uh, your daughter made a reservation. My daughter? You mean she's here? Yes, Miss Foster arrived several days ago. I see. Uh, show Mr. Foster to cabin C-17. Yes, sir. Thank you. You'd better leave the luggage until I've seen the accommodations. Right this way, sir. Looking for anybody in particular, sir? No, just wondering if there was anyone here I knew. Say, how about picking me up with a single in the shower? Yes, sir. She was stopping here for a few days. I, well, I couldn't wait any longer. You are glad to see me, aren't you? Of course, my dear. Of course. Seems so ridiculous, doesn't it? You're my father, and yet we stand here like two absolute strangers. It's all so new to us. We've got to get used to each other. much of each other, but we'll make up for it, you and I. Days and days all to ourselves, Father, but nobody to bother. Of course. Of course. Take it easy, Marty. You don't have to do that, do you? What's he look like? What's he look like? How would you expect him to look after all these years of it? You sure it's him? Sure, I'm sure. Which means plenty sure. Well, 
Well. Here you are, away from everything but the roar of old faithful. It's fine. Oh, you're going to love this room. And the sun, well, it simply haunts the place. And how about the comfortable bed? Well, what's all this? I didn't know just what your pet vices would be, Father. I think you've covered about all of them. <laughs> Thanks, my dear. Now you come over here and sit down. Just let me look at you. I want to talk to you. I bet I'm the silliest person you ever met. Oh, is that the effect I have, huh? Oh, Father, I feel like shouting to the whole world that after 18 years, I found you. And for keeps. For the rest of our lives, dear. A week from Tuesday, we sail for Europe. Oh. One place after another, as long as you want to stay. Years, if you like. Oh, years. We'll have a grand time. Now that you've made your money, I want you to have every chance to enjoy it. What's the matter, Father? You know, I was just wondering if I hadn't better tell you some of my really bad habits. <laughs> Do you have those, too? Oh. Oh, well, they couldn't be any worse than mine. Honest to goodness, I have the most awful habits. I sing in the bathtub, and you sing in the bath, Father. My nerves, I guess. Seeing things. Things? I thought I recognized a man who's been dead for years. Oh, well, maybe it's the suddenness of everything that makes you feel so nervous. Yes. Yes, maybe that's it. I guess... I guess I'm a little tired from the trip. I need to relax. You know, I was hoping a few days fishing would straighten me out. Fishing? Oh, I adore fishing. I'll go with you. No, my dear, not, not where I'm going. I, it's too rough. Oh, but I don't mind. Yes, but there, there are no cabins. It, it's practically wilderness. All right, but you'll be sorry. You know, I've acquired a bow since I arrived. Oh, a bow. Well, he's a lucky fellow. <laughs> One of the rangers. You mean uh, a government ranger? Uh-huh. You know, he's an exceptional young man. He's passed all of his examinations. And when the clock season closes, he's going to Washington. He's going to be in the Department of Justice. What do you think of that? I see. He's really a grand person. I think you'll like him. Maybe we'll meet him in the dining room at dinner. Sorry, dear. Yes, thanks. Everything satisfactory? Yes, thank you. Don't forget our campfire entertainment this evening. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thank you. Ruth, I don't believe I'll go on my fishing trip tonight after all. Why, Father? Good evening. Everything satisfactory? Oh, yes, thanks. Oh, hostess. Uh, that gentleman over there with the uh, very attractive young lady. It seems to me I've met him someplace or other. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to introduce me. Why, of course, Mr. Uh, Ryan. Ryan, I'd be very glad to. Fine-looking gentleman, your father. I think so. You, uh, here for the summer? No, just a few days fishing before we sail for Europe. Nice time of year for Europe. Leaving soon? Mm-hmm, a few days. Hello, neighbor. Our hostess here informs me that you're from Australia. Mighty interesting country down there. I've always wanted to hear more of it. 
Hardigan's my name. John Alexander Hardigan. New York and why? Well, not in why exactly. I mean, that's silly, but you know. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Uh... Foster's the name. Oh, yes, Foster. Would you have a cigar? No, no, thanks. If you don't mind, I'll smoke one of my own. Well, now, suppose I do mind. Oh, come on, have one with me. <laughs> now, there you are, cleaned out like a cavity. <laughs> Little Johnny Hardigan went through his pockets to get his friend's cigar, and when he got there, the pocket was bare, and he didn't even have any cigarettes. Cigar? Cigarette? <laughs> Miss! Um, Miss! Cigar? Cigarette, sir? Yes, yeah, thank you. Will it be here for a while, Mr. Foster? Oh, just a few days fishing, that's all. Fishing? Why, you're the man I've been looking for. Say, if it's just the same to you, I'd like to tag along and uh, we'll try our luck together, huh? <laughs> you may keep that change. Thank you, sir. That's all right. When I get service, I pay for it. <laughs> may I have a light? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Foster, uh, I've just suggested to your daughter that we all go out to the campfire. Thank you very much. Mr. Hardigan. Oh, what do you think about it, Father? Would you like to go? Well, if you don't mind, I think I'll go back to my cabin. I'm pretty tired. Oh, of course you are, darling. I'll go with you. No, no, you run along, dear. After all, I've been traveling all day. I don't want to spoil your evening for you. Well, you sure you won't mind? Not a bit. You go and have a good time. Oh, here's your coat, dear. I'm uh, sorry you won't join us. We won't be late. Oh, good night, sir. If you'll excuse me. Oh, Mr. Foster, you won't forget our little fishing trip. I'm not much of a fisherman, but it will be a great pleasure. Well, hello there, if it isn't my boy scout. Hello there yourself. You haven't forgotten our campfire date, have you? Well, to tell you the truth, I had completely. Well, in that case, you're under arrest. I demand a lawyer. <laughs> Oh, pardon me, Mr. Ryan, Mr. Sherwood. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems I promised to do the campfire with Mr. Sherwood. Well, that's quite all right, Miss Foster. Uh, perhaps we can make it tomorrow night. Perhaps. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. that I hadn't gotten around to telling you how darn beautiful you are. Well, I didn't know that you were supposed to. Does the rule book call for the rangers to, to compliment the visitors? One of the most important rules. <laughs> well, you can go into that particular rule when there's more company. <laughs> <laughs> now, folks, you may not believe the story, but it's the truth. <laughs> yes, sir. Isn't that the man who tells those hair-raising tales? Pete? <laughs> no, I don't have to listen to that, do I? Well, Miss Foster, it seems that you're in luck. On page five, it says... <laughs> well, laugh yourself sick, for just the same when you talk of Yellowstone, you're talking of a spot that I can tell you quite a few things about. That's the stuff, Pete. Now, if I had my ranger's badge, I wouldn't let him laugh you down. <laughs> and I don't suppose that you'd believe another that more than 20 years ago, this park was a stamping ground for a gang of bank robbers, tougher and smarter than these pretty boy, baby-faced gangs you hear tell on these days. Why, shucks alive, Tracy Jenkins and his men could come roaring into town, shoot out all the lamps, rob the bank, and be gone before the post could even find a candle. Hey, Pete, do you think the money Tracy Jenkins got away with is still buried in the park? Yes, sir. That bank money's still here. Don't find on Jenkins' body when they caught him, or on that Anderson fellow when they got him. And Baldy Jack is the only other one. Oh, of them. Baldy Jack didn't get none of it. When they caught up with him, he was robbing grocery stores. And you can bet that Jack ain't going to come snooping around here, not with Pete on the lookout. No, sir. When a mountain man's eyes sees someone or something, he never forgets it. And that's the truth. <laughs> I hope I didn't startle you, Mr. Foster. Not at all. You see, your daughter passed me up for a ranger, so I thought I'd drop over and have a little chat. 
Well, step down, won't you? Hi. Great country up here, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. So uh, fresh and uh, open-minded. You don't have to look at me like that, Anderson. I'll tell you who I am. I'm Tracy Jenkins' son. Yes, I can see it now. Your father's mouth. Come on, spit it, Anderson. What are your plan? Stop calling me Anderson. I finished with that idiot when I walked out of San Quentin. Foster's the real name. Don't want me to be calling you Jenkins, do you? Forget my name or my father's, too. But don't forget I'm here to collect his share. So sit down and talk to me. What are your plans? You're in them, Ryan. Just as I promised Dynamite you would be. You didn't say anything to my daughter about this. Come on, come on. Let's get down to business. Now, when Dynamite contacted you with San Quentin, he told you what I'd expect, didn't he? He told you as soon as they sprung out, he'd expect to play ball on a 50-50 deal, didn't he? That's right. You know it's right. And that's why I'm here, Foster, standing right over the plate, waiting for you to pitch. Where'd you hide that money? Well, it'll be safe until Judgment Day. Which happens to be right here and now. So come on and talk to me, Foster. What are your plans? Don't ask me that again. You know what my plans are. 50-50 split. Only we've got to go slow. After waiting 18 years, I'm taking no chances. Neither am I. I've waited 18 years, too. Yes, but the best years of my life, that's what I paid for my share. 18 years in the truth mill. 18 years burning my eyes out, reading, trying to make myself the kind of a father my daughter could be proud of. Well, I'm making no move now that will cheat me out of it. I won't be cheated either. Dynamite will take care of that. Now listen, Foster, I'll give you to Lamar to crack through. Tomorrow? Why, it isn't safe. It's suicide. Ever been through a morgue, Foster? You ought to try it sometime. There's nothing like a morgue to help keep a fellow's mind. Why don't Old Yellowstone Ranger, and I rolled this trail since back in 83. And if you're asking me, stranger, it's the only life for me.
You know, I think this is the most enjoyable evening I've ever spent. It has been nice. One of those evenings to take home and sort of remember. Oh! What's the matter? It must be late. That's 12 o'clock. Let's hurry. Why, how time goes fly. Father will be worried. I should have been back ages ago. Oh, now, just a minute. We have a rule about fathers on page 28. You can read that to me in the morning about 10. Good night. I get up at 7. Ranger, stay away from my door. Good night. Good night. The thing is, friend, that I don't like to see you going into Jackson Hole without a guide. The trail this early season is very bad. If I wanted a guide, I'd hire one. All right, Mr. Foster, suit yourself. But it's very dangerous. Oh, good evening, Mr. Foster. Oh, good evening. I've been wanting to meet you, your daughter and I. Oh, yes, yes, I see. Sherwood's the name. Surely she's mentioned me. We missed you at the campfire. Well, campfire parties aren't exactly in my line. Anyway, I wanted to get an early start. I thought I'd try my luck around Jackson Hole. Pretty dangerous spot right now. Pete, where's this guide? Right. Well, I spoke to Mr. I Foster. never hire guides, young man. I can't be bothered with them. It isn't a question of being bothered, Mr. Foster. Chief Ranger Adele has issued orders that for the next few days, nobody is to pack into Jackson Hole without a guide. Well, this might be a good time for me to wish one order or two. For the next few days, I'd just as soon you'd leave my daughter to herself. I'm sorry, Mr. Foster, but it's my job to enforce the law. Let go of that bridle. Get off that horse. Let go. Get off. Mr. Foster, I tell you. Hey, why didn't you punch him in the nose? Because he happens to be the father of somebody I like. Well, I wouldn't let a little thing like that bother me. No, sherry. I'd enjoy a right good scrap now. I hope he breaks his neck. You know, that reminds me of the time that I was in the cavalry. And the general says to me, he says, well, it's the truth. I am worried, Mr. Riddell, terribly worried. Father said he'd be back by lunch. But I'm sure your father is perfectly safe, Miss Foster. However, if he doesn't show up soon, I'll put some of the boys on his trail. Oh, thank you. I would appreciate it. Goodbye. Good day, Miss Foster. <laughs> Who's the post I sent you to this morning? But, Chief, I figured that... That happens to be my job, Sherwood. Yes, sir, I know, Just sir, but... can't seem to take orders, eh? Listen, Chief, the dead guys are old Bess. is going to break loose. Don't hand me that, Sherwood. Old Bess hasn't erupted in over 27 years. George, tell Chief Adele about old Bess. The full moon is high tonight. Old Bess, you raised the devil himself. Two days now. Old Bess make big noise in the ground. If what George says is true, this is the biggest news that's broken since... Get busy. Spread the news all over the place. Yes, George... If you're not dead certain about this, Earth always tell Indians true. Okay. You boys heard it. Go ahead, spread it. Say, listen, Kenneth. Old Bess is going to town tonight. What? Yeah, any minute now. Pass the word along. Hello, Mama. Chief Ranger Riddell. Old Bess is expected to erupt tonight. Anytime. Hold your breath, Katie. Old Bess is going to do a rumble tonight. No. Make hotel. Old Bess is going to erupt tonight. Old Bess is going to erupt tonight. What do you think? Old Bess is finally coming through. Say, this will put the park right on the front page, won't it? It hasn't erupted since 1909. That's the best guard piece of news I've heard since Tracy Jenkins bit the dirt. Yes, sir. Listen, folks, at last you're going to see old Bess do some real fancy work. Come on. Come on, Gertrude, chip in the high, won't you? Pete, ain't you got any influence over this here animal? Oh, Miss Foster? Hello there, have I some news for you? Is it about Father? No, old Bess, one of our guys. She's been down with a sleeping sickness since 1909 and is about to wake up. Come on, I want you to come and see her. I'd like to, but I think I'd better stay here. No arguments now. This will be something to tell your children about. Come on, won't you please? I'd rather not. I'm, I'm nearly terribly worried. Grab your hat and coat. We won't be going along and I'll bring you right back. Oh, Hurry up now, don't be long.
come on, Gertrude. Blame me when I get my badge, you'll move faster than this. Pete, build a fire under. Not here. I'm saving that for the hill. <laughs> Please, you can't stand any closer. That's boiling water, so please, pull back. Hey, Sherwood, come here. Excuse me, I'll hustle back. You stay here. Hey, you know, baby, I don't like this. When an old gal has been quiet for 27 years, no telling what she'll do when she pops off. <laughs> but tell me, the last time she exploded, the... She went so high, she drowned a flock of geese flying south. <laughs> that ain't the truth, and you know it. At the base of the skull, there's a single bullet hole in the spine. Hello, Jim. Riddell. Get this straight. I want every entrance to this park closed immediately. No one is to leave or enter without a personal okay from me. Get it? Hello? New York? Mr. Stewart? Hardigan talking. Say, hey, listen, Mr. Stewart. That fellow Foster, or Anderson, whichever you want to call him, was found dead about a half an hour ago. I'm not interested in his condition. The shore the company sent you to Yellowstone to watch him and pick up our stolen money. Can I help it if the man gets knocked off? Anyway, I'd be glad to stay around here for a couple of days and see what I can pick up. You were hired for a particular job. It seems you failed. You can do as you like. Hello? Mrs. Stewart? Hello? Hello? Quit staring at me. I tell you, I don't know anything about it. Well, Doctor? The condition of the tissue, the eyes, and particularly the coagulation of the blood indicates that this man did not die from the bullet wound. Not from a bullet wound? Then how? This man was frozen to death. Please, Ruth. Say something. Anything. Don't you understand? I want to help you. To try, anyway. For 18 years, every hour of them I waited and waited. I went across the earth and back again to have been with it. And then for one day, I found it. I had a father of my own, just for one day. One day that seemed to make up for the 18 empty years. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden the world cracked wide open and... Okay, let's have it. Bureau of Investigation answering your call, sir. Hello, Washington. 
Riddell speaking. See, I tried to get in touch with you fellows last night. Plenty. A murder in the park. A man found dead under peculiar circumstances. No, we're not sure yet. I've lined up a few suspects, but I think you'd better send me a couple of men. No, no definite clues, but I've got everybody known to have met the man right here ready for questioning. Oh, sit right down. <laughs> <laughs> and the biggest fish I ever laid eyes on was one that I throwed my loop over, and I jerked the critter down and twisted his tail, and he throwed me high in the kite. And when I lit, I told the bamboos, and there was I afoot, a mile from shore, and couldn't swim a stroke. No stroke, eh? But hey, old little fella, how did you get ashore? But when I jerked my rope, I loosened his scales, and when they come drifting by, I clung aboard and went ashore. Gee, but what did you use for paddle? Oh, well, rope and hog time, if I didn't forget to tell you. I didn't need no paddle. How was that? <laughs> From there on in, it's all downhill. <laughs> yes, sir, and that's the truth. Pardon me, mister, but will you tell the chief I just got to see him. It's his very important and it's just so official. Yes, well, if that's all I've got to do, I'll do it for you later. Much later. Well, thank you. Here. Good morning. I see you've got everybody out here now. We'll get right to business. Good morning, Miss Foster. I'm glad you're here. Now then, tell me where you were all day yesterday, exactly, and what you did. Who is this man, Mr. Riddell? What right is he to? I should have told you before. Mr. Hardigan is a private detective and was kind enough to offer his services. In fact, he worked all night on the case with Sherwood and myself. I think you'd better answer his question. Well, I spent the greater part of the day in my cabin. I must caution you on the importance of telling the truth, Miss Foster. And the simple truth is that you did see your father sometime during the day yesterday, didn't you? No, unfortunately, I did not. And when you saw your father, he gave you a package of money to hide, didn't he? And assuming that he did. What bearing has that got on all of this? Well, I had hoped it wouldn't be my task to tell you this. Since it is... Tell me what? I represent the M.A. Fitch Surety Company. I've been sent west to recover some 90-odd thousands of dollars that some 18 years ago your father stole. That's a lie. An abominable lie. How dare you say that? Why, my father hasn't been in this country for years. Please sit down, Miss Foster. First of all, I'm convinced that you know nothing whatever of your father's death, or for that matter, his life either. It seems that your father was a member of the famous Tracy Jenkins gang, a group responsible for a series of bank robberies back in 1918. I've told you that for the past 18 years, my father has been in... In the penitentiary, Miss Foster. It isn't easy to tell you, love, but you've had enough already. But last night, after talking with Mr. Hardigan, I checked on the case. The fact is, your father was released just nine days ago. And just as we expected he would do, he came here to dig up the money. I'm sorry, I... She's here, it's Hardigan. We'd better wait a while. Let her. Now, I'll look here for the very last time. I beg you to inform them that I can be of invaluable service in this case. When I tell you that a term I've considered quite the criminologist, you'll know what I mean. You know what I mean? Well, maybe you did do it, mister, but they won't pay any attention to me. Well, as I was saying, one day when I was meandering on that up the trail, that was in the fall of 98. My memory don't fit me. Now, we don't care what you did in the last century. What about Foster? Well, I don't slide off the fence, mister. I'm a building up to him practice. You don't have to start at your youth. He came to the stables last night, didn't he? Yes, sir, he did. You know, I recollect when he built them stables. That was in the spring of... Never mind the stables. What was Foster's attitude? Attitude? Yes, attitude. Uh, what was he like? Well, he seemed kind of crotchety like. He used to be in a terrible hurry. Oh, he was in a hurry, eh? Where was he heading? Say, don't pop your suspender buttons, neighbor. I'm a getting to that. Now, I told Thank him. You. You're welcome. He was heading for Jackson Hole. And I said. You see, Dr. Thorst came back alone. That's right, isn't it? I told you so once. His saddle and blankets were dripping wet. How'd they get wet? That's what we want to know. And water, more than likely. Why do you think this Ross man had... Uh, that's just what I 
I've been trying to tell you. If I could get a word in anyways, go ahead. But you see, Chief, I think... We don't care what you think. Only what you know. If you know anything. Who's telling this story? You or me? Nobody up to now. I can't compete with no darn big fella, and he ain't gonna try. Now sit down, Pete, and tell us about Mr. Roth. He came in with his horse long about supper time. And he was tripping wet, too. What makes you so sure? Because I seen him. Oh, darn it, I know when wet's wet, don't I? And that's the truth. Might as well come clean, Ross. We've got enough to indict you. Really? Why waste my time and yours, Chief? All I know about Mr. Frost is that he was murdered. Murdered? How do you know he was murdered? Well, uh, what I mean to say is murder, accident, or suicide. I know nothing about it. So if you'll excuse me, I'll... No, no, sit down, Ross. I'll tell you when to go. Now then, how do you explain that when you get back to the stables yesterday, both you and your horse were dripping wet? Well, that's a lie. No, no, you're doing the lying, Ross. They were wet, weren't they? I advise you to tell the truth, Ross. You're under oath. Yeah, what about it? Well, now that I think about it, my clothes might have been slightly wet. You see, I, uh, well, my horse stumbled crossing a stream near the falls. What falls? Uh, I was wrong about that. It was a mile or two below the falls. What falls? Isn't it the fact that you knew that Foster had hidden some money in the park here and had come back to get it? No, that is not so. I demanded this questioning stop until I'm represented by counsel. Very well, Mr. Ross, but you'll remain at the end for further questioning. Come on, Ryan. Answer yes or no. Take it easy, wise guy. Ryan's got a bad heart. That's why the doctor said I wasn't to let him out of my sight. Mr. Ryan, are you quite sure that was the first time you'd met my father in the dining room that night? Positive, Miss Foster. You're a liar, Ryan. You were in Foster's cabin the night before that. Not unless you're saying so makes it a fact. I tell you, I was never in Foster's cabin. Then how do you account for this handkerchief being in our cabin? I couldn't say. It isn't mine. Monograms are identical. When were you in Foster's cabin? I was never there. Listen, wise guy. I saw him drop that handkerchief when he was dancing with the lady. Yes, I remember now. I, uh, I missed it right after the dance. And I suppose Miss Foster picked it up and kept it for a souvenir. Well, I... Wouldn't surprise me if you told us she also planted that gun on your dresser. We're not saying who planted it, but it was there when we checked in. Where was it when Foster was killed? In your hand? Or in his? Take it easy, wise guy. Why don't you look in your own backyard? There he is, looking at you. Suppose you ask this guy Payday. He talks louder than I do. Well, I'm a ranger at last. When can I have my badge? Sit down. Now? Now. Here, take my seat, Chief. Oh, no, you keep it. No, no, it's all yours. You fellas wait outside. Okay, it's a pleasure. Now, Payday. We understand that you know something about killing. Killing? Who, me? Did you see Foster the night before last? Yes, sir, at the, at the stable. Anyone with him? Well, now, let me think. Was there? Well, yeah, yes, sir. There was old Pete and Dick here. Did uh, Sherwood and Foster have any words? Well, no. Oh, was... come on, answer yes or no. Oh, no, he gets me all pedigled up. Hey, Day, you're a ranger now. You're under oath to tell the truth. I ain't got my badge yet. Come on, talk. Well, you see, Dick didn't want Foster to shove off without a guide. And Foster got sore, and then, well, Dick got kind of sore, and... Listen, Chief, I can explain this. Go ahead, Payday. They were sore, then what? Any blows? Well, not exactly blows, but... Uh... Oh, come on, come on, let's have it. Everything you saw or heard. But did you study to be a detective? Have you got a badge like the one I'm going to get? Yes, or no. No, but come on, tell me what happened. Oh, well, you see, it, well, it looked for a while as if somebody was going to poke somebody. Then Foster gave his horse his spurs and got away. Well, did Sherwood say anything after he left? Do I have to tell that, Chief? Go ahead, Payday. 
Well, he said he wished you'd break his plain neck. Well, I can substantiate that. I happened to ride by and heard everything said. I just want to see if they stick together. There's nothing to it, Chief. I can explain everything. Perhaps you'd better. Oh, gee, Thor, I'm sorry if I said anything to get you in the jam. You didn't, Payday. Sit down, Dick. Now go ahead. I tried to prevent Mr. Foster from leaving for Jackson Hole without a guide. They were your orders. He resented them and lost his temper. Well, I lost mine, I guess. Did you see Foster after that? No, sir, not until the next day after you had sent me out to patrol that area. I met him about a mile below the fall. Did you see anyone else riding around there? Yes, sir, Mr. Ross. With Foster? No, sir, I didn't meet Ross until later that afternoon. Well, what happened when you did meet Foster? Well, I was following your instructions, sir, and warned him again to keep off the south trail. We had a few words, and the first thing I knew, he whipped out his gun and threatened. You pulled your gun and shot him down. That's a rotten lie, Hardigan. All I did was take his gun from him. Took it from him? Where's that gun now? It's in my quarter, sir. You know regulations, don't you, Sherwood? Yes, sir. Yet you fought with a man who drew a gun, and you made no report of it. I'm sorry, sir. It didn't seem so important at the time. And for Mr. Foster... And I suppose it's of no importance you were the last man to see Foster alive, that he was murdered. Shot in the back. Take your hands off. May I examine this gun? Go ahead. And I suppose it's of no importance. There's been one bullet fired from this gun. Chief, you don't believe it. Sherwood, maybe you can explain this empty chamber. Yes, sir, of course. Save I can. it, Sherwood. Save it. The empty chamber speaks for itself. Now, Foster was killed with a bullet from a service gun, wasn't he? There's your service gun. There's your killer. You're a liar, Hardigan. I tell you, all I did was take his gun away I'd from I'd like him. to believe that, Sherwood. Chief, I can explain this. I hope you can, Sherwood. Why, of course I can. You go to your quarters. Remain there until the proper authorities arrive. Take him up, fat boy. Reach clear to the ceiling. Now let's hear Swanee River in Chinese. Hey, 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 hey. Don't you know better than to threaten a full-fledged ranger? Yes, Mr. Payday. Mr. Fong. Now how about a couple of real nice chicken sandwiches? Chicken sandwiches? Yeah, chicken sandwiches, and make it snappy and don't hold wheat. In nice house, catch them corned beef, yes. Caught fish, yes. Chicken, no God. No chicken? Hey, what kind of a joint is this? I don't believe it. Hardigan, there's only one explanation for a man being frozen to death up here. One of the refrigerators. Possibly. Well, my suggestion is that we look over the one in the barracks kitchen first. All right. I am O Yellowstone Ranger, just shaking along. Spells on my heels, shaking a song. Have you noticed anything wrong with the refrigerator, Fong? Anything out of order? Refrigerator? Yeah, icebox. No, no, no. Icebox, okie dokie. We better take a look at it. What are you doing in there? Well, I was looking for chicken, but now I'm looking for Chinaman. Oh, let's get this over. I want to ride into Jackson Hole before the government men arrive. <laughs> I told you once and for all, no, Dick. Come on, Pete. Now, it ain't no use. There's nobody in this park who's any more anxious to see you. But clear up that you... foster thing than I Now, listen, Pete. But I ain't hankering to spend no time in a cell for aiding and abetting oh, you to run off. Pete, no, sir, Reed. Pete, I'm not running off. Don't you understand? I've got to clear myself and prove to her. Oh, shucks. It ain't no use. That gal's been gone nigh over an hour. Gone? Where? 
She took the back trail cut to Jackson Hole, and I says to her... Pete, I've got to get out of here. Don't you understand? I've got to. Now, take it easy, son. I ain't loaning no government horses. Of course, if that horse of mine was missing and I didn't see nobody run off with him, wouldn't be my fault, would it? Thanks, Pete. Hope you don't have to dirty up that gun of mine in the saddlebags. The seals ain't never been broke yet. Thanks, Pete. I hope I don't have to. Well, it's the truth. innocent of your father's death as you are. Please try to believe that. I can prove it to you. Your horse was just frightened by a dead snake, the same snake that my horse shied at yesterday. That explains where the missing bullet went. There. thousand dollars worth. Been sleeping here 18 years, haven't you? Yes. Yes. Just waiting for me to awaken you. It's a little late to say I'm sorry, Dick. But I am terribly sorry. You see, I couldn't understand why you should quarrel with Father. Pete was letting him go without a guide. When I insisted he take one, he... Told me to mind my own business and rode off alone. I told her, Dell. I understand now. But at the time, it was all so confusing. I just... Of course. What are you doing way out here alone? I've been watching Mr. Ryan all day. Ryan? I'm sure he was in our cabin that night. When he rode up this trail, I followed him. Which way was he headed? Well, he was going that way when my horse shied. Let's go. I'd like to know. Ruth, you better wait here for me. There's no telling what might happen. I'm sorry, but I'm noted for my stubbornness. I'm sticking right at your heels until we find out who killed Father. finding you here. I didn't know that you were interested in frozen butterflies. Hmm. Looks like you dug up some nice specimens, too. Yeah, leave those alone. Oh, now, don't get excited, Professor. You see, I happen to be in the collecting business, too. On your feet up against that wall. I'd be delighted to oblige you, my good man, but unfortunately, I'm frozen to the ground. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, we can fix that, too. <sighs> Get back, I can't stand. Oh! Wait a minute, Ross. Don't shoot. I'll get out. It's all yours. Yellow, huh? Just like your father. 
He was afraid of me, too. Who are you? Tracy Jenkins was an old friend of mine. Did you ever hear of Ball Jack? Ball Jack? Yes, Mr. Jenkins. Ball Jack. <laughs> Useful thing, this top piece. It's fool smarter men than you, Mr. Jenkins. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. I won't talk. I swear I won't talk. Pete's right. There must be a cave behind these falls. Well, so far, Pete's been right. Ten to one, he's right about what's on the inside, too. And not so long ago, either. Please don't go any further. I'm afraid for you. Whoever did this is still here. I'm going to find him. Come on. Scared? No, not exactly. Why is it so cold in here? Ammonia gas, smell it? Yeah. Please, oh. don't you think you'd better go back? No. Don't you see, if we were trapped in here for any length of time, it would burn our lungs, freeze us to death. That's what must have happened to Father. Listen, that sound seems to be getting louder. Look. <coughs> Stay where you are and don't move. Drop that gun or I'll shoot. Ruth. He's been frozen to death. Who is he? I... I don't know. <coughs> it is ammonia gas. The basin's full of it. Pete's hunch was right. It's like the Tom Thumb guys are loaded with ammonia. Dick, someone's been digging here. Look. Saddlebags frozen. It's quite clear what's in those bags, Dick. It seems your father wasn't the only one who knew where the money had been hidden. <coughs> Ruth, come here. A sheet of paper frozen beneath the ice. <coughs> My dearest Ruth. Well, this was written to you. Father's handwriting. It's about the money, Ruth, where it's hidden and how to find it. That's why the cabin was ransacked. Somebody knew about this. The guy said it erupts every 30 minutes. How long have we been in here? I don't know. Your father and this man were caught in that eruption and frozen to death. We've got to get out of here quick. Hello, Sherwood. What are you doing here? Mr. Hardigan. A little detecting on my own, and I'm doing all right, too. Yeah, so I see. We found him here, Mr. Hardigan. Dick had nothing to do with that. I know I didn't. Okay, son, put Pete's gun away and let's talk. How do you know it's Pete's gun? Well, it's my business to know things. Then do you know who he is? Sure I know. I've followed Professor Roth through the park for years. Oh. Ross? Well, he's better known as Ball Jack, one of the old Tracy Jenkins gang. Then it was he who... No, 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 no. Ball Jack did not kill your father. He did, however, steal a letter your father left for you. I saw him take it from the dresser. That's why I accused you yesterday. What do you mean? Well, if I planted it on you, it gave the others a chance to kill each other off. <laughs> Certainly seems as if they're taking advantage of it. Now, your father's frozen body was flung in here. I get it. The subterranean river that feeds Old Bess must lie directly below this geyser. If Bess hadn't erupted, we'd never have known. Yeah, they didn't figure on that. Listen, let's collect these bags and get out of here. <coughs> this is stuff for keeps. Come here, Hardigan. Give me a hand. We haven't any time to lose. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks for reminding me. Now, don't move out of one of you. I'm sorry it has to end this way. You're both a couple of nice kids, but you shouldn't have mixed up in it. What are you talking about? I, I packed those bags for five years. There's a fortune in there, and I like fortunes. Get over there beside her. No, you don't, Sherwood. Get over there. I'm not going to make the same mistake with you. I made with Foster. Then it was you who murdered my father. <laughs> yeah. Only this time, old Bess isn't going to deliver any frozen body. Oh, come 
Come on, Gertrude, let yourself go. This is gosh darn important. Chin up, Ruth. Everything's all right. Now that we know what happened, the only thing to do is to try to forget it. Well, I hate to admit that I need a shoulder to weep on, but I do. One of our most important rules, Miss Foster, on page four, I believe, is that whenever beautiful young ladies start to weep, they must be taught to laugh. When does school start? Right now, this minute. Is it a long course? No, not very. How soon you graduate is entirely up to you. Hey, Dick! Oh, Dick! What do you want? I got it! Got what? What's that? 